Hi there, this is Tom Finnis, and we're going to be breaking down an essay on the 3 and 5 Antis campaign and other methods of social control. Let's start. So to start with, we're going to look at the exam structure before we look at the actual essay. First, you'll do an introduction showing your context, criteria, themes and your first thoughts suggest. Then going to go into your first paragraph with your point evidence explain the link, that peel structure, which you're also going to repeat for the second paragraph and for the third paragraph. Then going to sum it all up in that conclusion, answering the question and linking back to that argument that you've been making throughout. It's quite an easy structure to follow and we'll be using that throughout this video. Let's start. The question that we're going to be looking at is the three in five antis secured males control over society. How far do you agree? Firstly, we're going to break down which part of the question our themes are going to be. So we're looking at the three and five antis campaigns as well as society in general. So we have to bring our two other themes from this idea. And then the blue here shows what the criteria we're going to make from this question. You also have got the how far do you agree part, which is obviously quite opinionated. So you just got to make sure you're summing it up in the conclusion well, but not using I throughout the exam structure too much. So here's the criteria and the themes that I've written myself. You've got Mao's final steps consolidating his power as Wu for Wu Chan was through the three and five anti campaigns. Before I go any further, I'd just like to explain that the Wu for Wu Chan is a kind of godlike figure who doesn't get questioned at anything he does. The themes that I've broken down is the first paragraph, I would be looking at the three and five antis campaigns themselves, then the hundred flowers campaign, and then in the third paragraph looking at other methods of social control such as the Lao guys and the iron rice bowl. Now going to look at the main three body paragraphs as well as after the introduction and the conclusion as well. To start, we're going to look at this introduction and break it down into its multiple parts that are highlighted before. Also, we've got the question in the top right hand corner, just always remember to link back to that. That's more for the main parts of the question, but also I would have it in the top part of your page, just to always remember to link back throughout your essay. So to start with, we've got the context, so I'm just giving a little bit of background. The three and five anti campaigns were to stop corruption, waste and delay in the party, and then extend to the theft of state property, tax evasion, bribery and economic espionage. These were from 1951 to 52, so it's just giving a little bit of background on what the main question is asking you to answer about. So you show to examiner, you know what you're doing. Also, I won't repeat what I've just said for the criteria and the themes. You're also just stating. Oh, I've put this criteria shall be explored. Ah, yes. And then explain your themes. And first thoughts suggest, I can never say that properly, that just giving a bit of your own opinion. So I said all social control methods were highly effective. However, both the three and five anti's campaigns and the hundred flowers campaigns can be seen for Mao's complete consolidation of power. Obviously, I'm linking back to the question at the very start of the entire essay that I'm writing. And I'm also not completely deciding on which one is more a reason for his control on power. Moving on to the first paragraph, looking at the three and five anti's campaign. I've still got that question in the top right hand corner, just remember to link back to that at the end of the end of the paragraph. So to start with, we're looking at the point. This inward looking policy on the party was used to root out the flies and tigers. The tigers were the larger offenders whilst the flies were the smaller offenders of these campaigns. The system also allowed fellow colleagues to oust each other. So personal feuds became public and violent and further secured mouse control as it changed the party's complete makeup. This infighting was obviously the reason for the complete movement in the party and the change to its overall makeup. The evidence linking to this point is the party put down 100,000 so-called Tibers by 1952, 
but just to draw your attention to the last sentence of this evidence, it's key to remember that only 1% were shot, 1% were sent to labour camps, 3% jailed for 10 years or more, and the rest got fined. So obviously 95% of people only got fined, which is not a very extreme campaign compared to many of them where many were shot or sent to labour camps. But also it's key to remember that many committed suicide, as in this, as in China, the outlook on society was that if somebody had lost faith, they were then deemed as lesser than other people in their own opinions. Therefore, many more died from this method. Denunciation boxes were used, linking back to this evidence still, and these were anonymous and evidence used at struggle meetings was often fabricated. So obviously many more were ousted because of this, just from personal feuds. Linking to the explanation now, this allowed Mao to completely rebuild his party as party members continuously outed each other, leading to them become labelling as rightists. He destroyed the party and then rebuilt the entire system. I mean, you might not say he destroyed it, it's more the party destroyed itself. And then he did manage, however, to rebuild it around himself with his own ideological agenda. A Wu for Wu Chan, as I explained before, is a person with all power and godlike status, as he was able to do this without question. Nobody sort of standing up to, up to him. Linking back to the question in the top right, I said that this control was more over the party rather than society as a whole, therefore secured partial power as the leader, but needs to have complete control over both to be a godlike figurehead. Obviously, this, cons this these campaigns secured his party his control over the party, but not over society as a whole, so it can't be seen as a sweep of Wu Chan just yet. Now looking at the second paragraph, we're now going on to look at the 100 flowers campaign. So we've got that question in the top right hand corner. So we've got the point, evidence, explanation and link for a second time. So looking firstly at the point, this campaign was used outside of the party to destroy further rightists in 1956. So now after the three and five anti's campaigns, it could be seen as Mao securing his full Wu for Wu Chan status as he went unquestioned about the methods of extreme social control. So the evidence I'll just explain briefly is obviously on your screen. Basically, Mao told the people to openly criticise the party and himself. Firstly, people were very hesitant after he said it in a speech, and then there was quite a rush of criticisms. Mao then went back on what he had exactly said and changed it to luring the snakes out of their pits. So basically asking those people who were to criticise of then being the snakes and trying to get rid of those rightists. This led to half a million being branded as those rightists and many being re-educated and many being executed. So obviously this is quite an extreme campaign and this was con controlling society as a whole rather than just the party. So obviously it's an outward looking policy rather than an inward looking policy. So linking to the explanation, Mao was able to change what he had publicly said and not be questioned for it or even told by a the party that he could not do it, showing that he had complete social control. This sent a message to Mao's enemies, as they now knew the extent of his power, so could never question his status. So now he's completely reached that godlike Wu for Wu Chan status. So linking back to that question, this method of control can be seen as the main reason for Mao's consolidation of power. So I'm putting in my opinion in here now, as the Wu for Wu Chan over society because he could say what he wanted to happen and not be questioned in the process. So I'm saying this paragraph as a whole is being in disagreement with the question rather than in agreement. Moving on to the third paragraph now, looking at other methods of social control. Still got that question in the top right hand corner, just to link back, looking at peel structure again. So the further point, got Mao used other methods of social control throughout his reign to keep a tight grip on the whole of society rather than just inward looking policy, such as inside the party of the three and five anti's campaigns. This included the Laogai system, which used throughout reform, thought reform, sorry, and other torture methods for re-education. Manual labor was also used to add to the economy. So this was such as building, train 
tracks and roads. In the labour camps, up to 25 million or more people between 1949 and 76 in the Laogai system were killed by the extreme conditions along with the manual labour, showing how extreme and degrading these conditions were. The iron rice bowl was a way of keeping people in specific roles and granting occupation and general security and benefits to keep some from questioning anything, otherwise they would lose everything. That's quite a strange sentence that I've written, but basically the iron rice bowl put people in jobs that they were told to be in and were who people who were more in favour of the party then got the better jobs. And the gang dang gang dang an was also used. So this was basically a performance and attitude of each citizen was recorded and then there was how much they were in favour of the party to do specific jobs again a bit like the iron rice bowl. So the explanation for this evidence is this these extra forms of social control added to Mao's power during the entire time period over society but were implemented throughout so cannot be seen as the main reason for his final consolidation of power. So I'm looking at that secured part of the question where Mao's control was completely reinforced by the other campaigns three and five along with the 100 flowers campaigns these just sort of backed up part of his power but all of these methods helped him keep his tight grip over society within this time period so linking back to that question i'm trying not to repeat my explanation again which i kind of have done of consolidation of power is a definitive point in the 1950s so i'm saying this in the three and five antis as well as the 100 flowers but there are other methods that have been used to help his control so they can't be seen as a core reason for Mao's development to Wu for Wu Chan station status like core reason so it's one of the reasons but it's not the main reason now we're going to summarize it all in this conclusion and just completely round off the argument so I've just broken it up into four different parts like I did in my other essays. So Mao's final steps consolidating power can be seen through the 100 flowers campaign more than the three and five antis campaign. So I'm just setting out that overall judgment, linking back to that criteria and saying that I'm really in disagreement with this question. So backing up that point that I just made, I'm saying that this is due to his Wu for Wu Chan status being more applied to the whole of society not being able to question his power rather than just his own party. Therefore, I'm in disagreement with the question. So I'm just saying, completely explaining what I've just said in the previous sentence. So just, however, you do want to give a little bit of the other side of the argument. So social control was maintained throughout, through the Lyoga system, but his consolidation of power was when no one could question the status and word. So I'm talking about definitive point such as the 100 flowers campaign rather than just the Laogai system in general which was throughout the time period. So then I just reinforce the overall judgment with that extra piece of evidence so maybe just have a think of anything that I've missed and what you would add to back up this type of argument or if you would write your conclusion differently maybe write it down in the comments and say how you would change my conclusion or which side of the argument you would be on. I'd just like to say thank you for watching, please like and subscribe to this channel and if you'd like to watch my other two videos as well, the links will just come up just now and I'd just like to leave you with this mail quotation, see ya.